So there's a saying that I'm sure many of you are familiar with that goes, to the man with a hammer, every problem is a nail. And I definitely find myself in this camp. So yeah, hands up for that. And I've just taken this as an opportunity to explore a little bit. So creating a digital knowledge base for your organization. So as I say, this is just an excuse to experiment, but I think it's a potentially very good future use of LogSeq, specifically when it becomes a proper collaboration tool, which I think is on the roadmap. But we'll get there a little bit later. But first, let's look at this thing of what is meant by a digital knowledge base. Building a second brain for yourself just doesn't cut it sometimes. And you find yourself working in an organization and people just don't have the same shared mental model of how things work. Yes, there's your databases. Yes, you have your processes and whatever. But oftentimes it's not documented. It's just sitting in someone's head. And if that person was to fall off the face of the earth, it takes you a long time to sort of build up that knowledge again. Well, the way I think about it is it's like the layers above, you know, your databases and your business logic and your processes. And it's just getting all of those things together into this meta system. So in its simplest form, it can just be a company knowledge base or wiki. So knowledge base, there's a little bit redundant. So let me just say knowledge, a company wiki, because it could just be a wiki, super simple, just click around and everything is there. But in its, in a more complex form, I think there's this potential to build a very rich meta understanding of all the internal systems and ideas and have these things evolve over time. Um, this was inspired by a video by Real Fake Picnic on Twitter, which I'll link to below, who uses Rome for her blockchain community. And it just spurred my mind on because it looks like there can be a real potential to collaborate around something that's continually evolving. But just going to the point above that, it's basically an intranet that has evolved to suit the times. <laughs> you know, hopping up the language here. So as I said, I'm actually just using this to experiment and this is more of a future potential thing. The things that I was experimenting with, A, the format, it's a little bit different, half-baked. I haven't really put as much time into structuring this, but yeah, I just wanted to look at these few things. So the new log seat graph, namespaces, using markdown headings, and then using emojis in page names for the first time. So let's get into each of these different points first before we actually click around this knowledge base and see what it looks like. So if you want to skip to the knowledge base and see what it looks like, use the timestamps below, but um, I think a few people might be interested in the features. So let's call this features. That was what I was experimenting with. LogSeq has recently updated the graph and it is now Actually, that's my graph. Let me rather go to my other base, which is opened in the desktop app. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I'm already there. So LogSeq has, has updated the graph to be much simpler and quicker loading. So the, the older graph used to take a little bit of time to load, particularly if you had lots of blocks in your database or if you had very long um, page entries in your database. I had none of those. I didn't have any problems, but I am still enjoying this new look graph and you can see here there's also colors i'm not so sure exactly what the colors mean i haven't really ascertained just what that means yet but um oopsie but there's a cool feature of when i click on this page and i move it around i can see everything that's linked to it um, i think this was available on the old graph but I, I can't actually remember now so it's just a very nice way to see where all your links are. For those who aren't very familiar with the graph and you're just finding this for the first time, the nodes here are pages and the edges or lines are links between pages. So I've just refreshed my graph and something's changed up, but it's fine. But I can see here that when I click on that link and I see these, these lines here, I see that there's a connection between these two pages. Let me just move that into my face. So that my face doesn't block it. So that is how the graph works. Very, very cool, very powerful to just like scoot around your thoughts and, and see everything as a network. So that brings us to the next thing that I want to look at, which is this using namespaces. So you can see here, I've got a whole number of roles. And the way that I've done that is I've used the forward slash namespace. 
if I want to enter a new role, so for instance, maybe I've just got a role of project manager, what I do is I just say role forward slash project manager. And what that does is it creates a link to this hierarchy of roles. So the project manager has a role. And if I go there and I look at that hierarchy, that's where I find it. And I can click on that and I can find, let me just collapse that there. I can find here all the different roles that have been created with this um, namespace. So that is what namespaces mean. It just allows you to create a hierarchy in your database. I'm not so sure if I'm gonna use this in the long term. I was just experimenting with it a little bit. It's not working 100% smoothly for me. My way of working is perhaps not accustomed to it yet and I need to adjust it. So that's just a heads up that I probably don't really know what I'm talking about. But what it does in your, in your actual text files is it creates a period. So this goes to roll period tech manager. So it doesn't create two pages, but it allows you to create a link to both the upper level hierarchy of role and to the lower level of tech manager. Just to also be clear, if you are wanting to bring up your menu, you also use that forward slash, but this is different. The one that I wanted to go into next was markdown headings. So markdown headings, super cool. Let me just go to my reference page. Reference headings. Okay, cool. So here you can see that I've got all these different levels of heading. And the way that I do that is using markdown hashtags. So hashtag space, this is heading one, gives me heading one. So if I want to enter what I see in the first line there, then I will just say hashtag and I'll say, what a cool heading. But now I can change the level of this just by adding more hashtags here. So Hashtag two makes it level two. Hashtag three makes it level three. Four hashtags, level four, etc., etc. But what you shouldn't do is not leave a gap because what that will do is it will create a linked page. Hashtag without a space is the same as doing that, basically. So just a note, hashtag, enter space. So it's a very nice way just to structure your, your text just so it's very easily readable and accessible to other users. The final thing that I wanted to do was use emojis and page names for the first time. So this is just a nice excuse where I could um, actually go and bring in some emojis to just bring color. So this is using a whole bunch of areas in our business. Um, let me actually go here and you can see if I go to services, let me go to the hierarchy page of services. Uh, there's Airtable and mini extensions. Um, let me go to areas and you can see there all of these emojis and they work pretty well. There's one or two things that I've found that um, haven't really worked, but it's just a nice visual way to, to link to pages. Obviously you can use this in many different things. So the evergreen people or people who use um, Andy Matushak's model, like with the evergreens and the seedlings, it's very nice to have your little emoji of a seed. So I can create a link seedling there. So how do I get these emojis? Very simple, just Windows key and the period or full stop, if that's what you call it. And then you can just have this little cool guy with sunglasses. If you're on a Mac, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, I'm sure it's a, it's a very similar shortcut there. So Mac key and period. So clicking around to see what this looks like. So you've already seen this and I've been clicking around a little bit, but it's just a hyperlinked way to navigate around your base. So a key thing that I'm actually trying to achieve here is show dependencies. So if I go to hmm, Tech Team SOPs, for instance, I've actually queried. So in my previous video, you saw how to do queries um, of this nature, but I can see I've, I've, I've created a, um, the query, which this will be like their landing page where they can see all their SOPs. And then if I go into this, um, some important process here, let me just open up on the right. Let me actually open it up in the main page. 
you can see here that I've got the metadata that this is an SOP and that the services it uses is Airtable and the areas that it affects are recruitment, learner management and tech. And then I've, I've used Markdown to delineate my, my um, text in a nice way and make it nice and readable. And then I've put there what the different roles of people need to do. And it's also specifically so that, you know, it's not a person that's linked there because if a person leaves, then goodbye. How will you know what, what you need to do? But if I go to this role, head of learner management, I can see there that I've actually linked a person to that head of learner management. And I go to this person and I can see, oh, he's got um, this role associated with his name. I haven't used that as a property just yet because, you know, too many different things at once and my expertise is not quite there to know how all of these things will manifest in the end. And, and I think that's one drawback. Like it does require a lot of clever structuring in order to get this to work really well. But there's a nice picture of John John Jones and a nice intro of him as well. Maybe a, a link to a video so that someone who's new to the company can go and find that information. And that when John leaves, I can just, you know, delete his role over here. And that's that. He's unlinked. I can link someone else into the role. Okay, cool. So another thing which I want to look into is I've got this thing, which is a portal and I can see that hmm, I've got these link references here and portal is what is a portal? It's a type of thing in my database. Oh, and I've got three different things here where portal form and everything is linked and I haven't got anything linked to forms yet. Or have I? No, but the idea here is that I will have all the services mapped out um, on my entity relationship diagram or just you know some graphic which shows the process flow through the company but then when i enter it into a documentation form it makes me think a little bit more about it and it also becomes a repository that other people can go to and see what these dependencies are and how all these different services fit together because whilst um, your process flow diagrams are great like there's another level of shared information that really makes it a valuable resource for the company. So we've, we've looked around what it might look like and I think there's a lot of work required here. So please don't assume that I'm, I'm, I'm saying that this is how you might do it. So I definitely don't want to upsell this on LogSeq. Like it's not yet there for this multiplayer version where everyone has access to it, but I think in the future it could be and it's something to look out for. So the way that I've structured it on LogSeq is definitely more of a wiki at the moment, but even being able to see that graph for me just really helps to just have this mental map of the organization. Whilst I think a wiki for my personal database is not something that I want to get into, for a company database, that's not the worst outcome. You know, people can click around and go and find the information they need. So at the moment, I'm using shared drives. So I used a solution called Box, which everyone in the company who's using this, which is currently only two people um, can, go, can go and access this. This is because at the moment LogSeq is not quite there yet for collaborative software. They are working on a solution that is database only that doesn't use like local files. That's, that's future LogSeq. So I used Box just because lots of people have Dropbox and lots of people have Google Drive, but Box is not a common solution. I did find that there were some problems with box saving the emoji names. Google Drive hasn't given me that error now that I've started to move them into my personal database too. So ownership and governance is obviously a big question, but I don't think this is a log C question. I think it's more of a company question, like who owns the data, who's able to input the information. At the moment, it's mainly me who owns the data and other people who can access it, or this one other person who can access it, but that will hopefully scale a little bit better if we do end up implementing this in the long term because you'll see now alternative tools we might actually be using another tool so the benefits creating rich documentation in a frictionless manner it really is super easy um, rapid navigation and this ability to identify dependencies for me it's like that's that's on the horizon and i don't know if lots of other tools will do that but i may be mistaken i'm not an expert in this definitely and then the powerful searchability as well. Queries hmm, from our previous video, loving the queries. What are the drawbacks? Okay, so lack of familiarity, you know, people coming into this 
it's not really the most intuitive system and it's taken me a long place a long time to get to my familiarity and just joy of using the program and i think a lot of people will get there eventually but it's not you know this folders approach where i just put my fold my file in this folder and everything is simple i, I think it can be simple but it is just difference you know moving from this um, hierarchy to network thinking so lack of privacy I'm sure in a future solution you might be able to determine which pages are private and which are shared with the group but in the current guise if you're doing it like like this is like I'm doing it everything will be public so not only is a lack of familiarity an issue but it will be difficult to set up properly like I, I don't know when to use properties just yet for this sort of structure um, are the namespaces really the best way to go about it uh, I don't know so yeah it, it might be that I'd actually just want to have a person and then have a property type person rather than like person namespace person's name i don't know what the trade-offs are at the moment but i think in, like this is something that will evolve and then just corruptible so that's more because of the shared drive situation at the moment i don't know if it will work um, super well so alternative tools when not self-hosting so if you are self-hosting there's um tiddly wiki if you know what you're doing i'm just going to call out a couple of ones that have come up in my research because as I said, as a company, we're looking to go for one of these solutions. Logseq might definitely be in our future, but for now, they are like you know, it's it's a little bit of a hurdle for for the organization. So Notion, I think lots of people know Notion, powerful and versatile, but maybe too powerful. Maybe you start doing things that you know just increase the complexity rather than make it simple. And that's also the challenge with Logseq, of course. Like you can always go too complex rather than just keeping it simple outline and um, they are basically an open source alternative to notion not the same level of power i would say but just a nice clean place for you to enter your documentation so i think the best thing there that's actually something i should have said like these are the things that i found was like hmm this was the real selling point for me if i looked at this for a company solution and for outline it was the fixed pricing so it's uh, not per user it's just there's different tiers so you know if you go to a certain level you're not going to have to pay ten dollars per person for a hundred people like it'll just be like seventy dollars or something I, I can't remember exactly what the pricing was so coda is another one i think the cool thing there and these these tools are actually quite similar i guess to big market like these people that they're looking at each other and lots of similarities but for me what makes Coda cool is that you only pay for creator privileges. So say now you have a company of like a thousand, but you have only four creators there. I think that's a terrible power imbalance, but you know, they'd only pay, I think it's like $30 per creator. So $120 instead of paying for everyone to be able to access this. So that's a cool feature for Coda. If you are interested there, Confluence, part of that Atlassian suite. So probably accessible for a lot of companies. Nuclino, cheaper subscription than some of the other tools. It's like $5 a month per person. But again, is that subscription model? We're a small company, so it doesn't really impact us too much. The other cool thing there is it has a graph. So it looks a little bit more like Logseek. My heart, my heart, my heart still belongs to Logseek. Um, Slab, Slat, just loads of competitors. Slab and Slat actually look pretty cool and are definitely something that we'll be looking at too. So in conclusion, there's probably better suited tools right now for this knowledge base. I think it's definitely something that every company should do. That's maybe the first point. And I'll link to a cool article below about, um, about this like surge in knowledge bases. And that article also looks at the different database structures, you know, how the graph database is really enabling this, this move. And I, I don't know enough about databases, but like it looks very, very cool. And yeah, I guess the final point there is definitely something to watch going forward. So keep your eyes peeled on the Logseek team. They've done some amazing things and I don't put it past them to make an amazing collaborative tool that will allow people to build knowledge bases. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and um, I'll see you soon.